Hello viewers, this is Wagada Ronald taking you through today's tutorial on Kepler's laws of planetary motion. So the first law says that all planets revolve in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. So let's try to illustrate that. So this is the ellipse uh, or elliptical orbit and this is the sun at one focus. An ellipse has two foci. One foci is here, another one is here. This will be the major major axis and this is the minor axis so the sun is at one axis and all the other orbits will revolve around this orbit which is elliptical for example if this is one of the planet it will revolve around that orbit in this direction like that so that is how planets revolve with the sun at as the focus so that is the first law let's go to the second law Second law states that the imaginary line joining the sun to any planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. So let's try to illustrate that. So this is a planet. It, brought, it revolves around the sun in that orbit. So suppose that if the planet starts from here and moves up to here in two hours. So in, the, in that time interval it will have covered an area that which is shaded the whole of this area will be covered in two hours also if also at this point c it is also timed for two hours it will be able to move up to point d so in that case it will cover an area that so by new kepler's second law it says that this area will be equal to this area and i think you can see that the distance moved when the planet is closer to the sun is greater than the one moved when the planet is far from the sun. So that is Kepler's second law. Let's go to third law and see what it says. It says that the square of the period of rotation, capital T, of a planet above the sun, above the sun is directly proportional to the tube of its mean distance r from the sun i.e. t squared is proportional to r cubed now this period t is the time taken to cover one complete revolution for example if this is the sun and this is our planet and you start timing at this point then the planet has to move through that through that through that until it comes back where you started timing from so the time taken to move from here until this very point where I started from is what we call the period. And this is our radius of that orbit. So this time t squared is proportional to this radius of the orbit tubed. And that takes us to the consistence of Newton's law of gravitation with Kepler's third law. So as this planet is moving around the sun there should be a force that is pulling it towards the center and that is called centripetal force and this is the radius of that orbit this is the mass of the sun this is the mass of the planet therefore consider a planet of mass mp moving around the sun of mass ms in a circular orbit of radius r at equilibrium centripetal force will be equal to gravitational force Centripetal force is due to circular motion and gravitational force is due to the masses of the two planets. So centripetal force is given by the formula mv squared over r. And the gravitational force is the product of the masses divided by the mean distance apart which is r squared multiplied by the gravitational constant capital G. So in this case you will realize that mp and mp which is the mass of the planet is, the, is on is on both sides so we shall cancel it out when we cancel it out also this r one r will cancel this side so that I remain with v squared equal to gms over small r but you know that v is the same as distance over time remember from here to here the distance traveled will be equal to the circumference of that path of that orbit and the time will be equal to the period of revolution. Therefore, 
the velocity will, can be given as the circumference over the period. So when you substitute this V here, we shall come up with this part. And when you cross multiply, we shall come up with this step. And we make, when we make T square the subject, we shall come up with this. Now from there, you realize that 4 pi squared and GMS are all constants. Therefore, T squared is proportional to R cubed. So that is Newton's consistence with Kepler's third law. So we shall use that to go through this problem. Calculate the ratio of mass of the earth to that of the sun given that the moon moves round the earth in a circular orbit of radius 4.85 kilometers with a period of 27 days. And the orbital radius of the moon around the sun is 1.5 kilometers and its period is 365 days. So this will be the earth and this will be the planet or the moon. So it revolves around the earth with a period which was given as 27 days and the radius as 4.5 kilometers. Now we are not going to change to SI unit because they, they want the ratio. So we shall just leave them in the units given. So at equilibrium we know that we know this law which we have derived the equation. So T1 squared is equal to 4 pi squared over GME everything multiplied by R1 cubed. So when we cross multiply, we shall come up with this and call it our equation 1. So we don't want to substitute this step because if you substitute, we shall be over rounding off. So by the time we reach the final answer, there will be a lot of errors because of rounding off. So we shall first leave it as an equation and go to the second part of the sun and the moon. So with the sun and the moon, you have R2 and you have the period. So still use the same equation, cross multiply and get this equation. So that we have now two equations. When we divide, this divide by this, we shall come up with this step. And in this step, we shall notice that this is common to this. So it will cancel out. This is common to this. So it will cancel out and remain with that step. So in this step, they want the ratio of the mass of the earth to the mass of the sun. So I isolate it out as I've done here. So we remain with T1 over T2, everything squared, which is that. And this side we remain with R1 over R2, everything chopped. Now we shall substitute. Remember, T1 was given as 27 days and T2 was given as 365. So come and substitute T1 and T2 here. T2 is that side, T1 is there. Then R1 was given as... 4x.5 and R2 was given as 1.5x.8. So come and substitute also for R1 and for R2 to get that. So when you use the calculator to evaluate this, you'll come up with this. And that, there are no units because it was a ratio. So that brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel, Roa, a learning platform.